Hey everybody, welcome to this week's video. This week is graduation. Cannot believe how fast this year has gone by. It's been a challenging year, no doubt, but we are so excited for you, our graduates, as you move on from University of Chicago to the big world, to do amazing things, to lead your life with integrity, with value. And I hope that you will find some time to study some Torah, join a Jewish community, make it part of your life. Now, as you go out into the world, you will have to seek out that Jewish community. You may not have a Chabad house right on your doorstep, looking out for you, running after you, sending you messages and tabling on campus. You are going to have to seek it out and make it part of your life. I hope you will. We're here to help you. We're here to guide you in any way we can. And we can't wait to see the amazing things that you are going to accomplish. And now for the Devar Torah. So this week's Torah portion starts out with the words, Im If you go in my commandments. <clears throat> the Torah lists a whole bunch of beautiful, absolutely wonderful promises that God assures us that we will get if we follow the commandments. We will have an abundance of food, prosperity, health, security. And the, the first reading ends with you will live on the land securely. And then it says, that will give peace in the land. That's a blessing we could use right now. Peace in the land. But the rabbis ask a question. If it says that you will have security, isn't security peace? What is this security and peace, two separate things? If you live securely in the land, that means things are peaceful. So the Ibn Ezra, the Arachayim, explained, this is something that was shared by a colleague of mine in Israel, Rabbi Ashkenazi, and he shared the following idea. Arachayim says that security is security from our neighbors. That they won't, we won't be fighting. There'll be no war. We will live secure in our borders. We need that. We need that now. Peace is insult. We'll have peace inside the land, peace amongst ourselves. Let's talk about the word shalom for a little bit. Shalom is one of the most famous Hebrew words. I walk down the street and some guy says to me, shalom. What's this word shalom? We have shalom by it. Harmony in the home is called shalom by it. Shalom in the home. Shabbat shalom. In our prayer, the final blessing in the Amidah, in the daily prayer, every single day, three times a day at least, Sim Shalom, please give us peace. We conclude that God is the one who blesses his people with peace. Ose Shalom Bim Romav. The end of every Amidah, the end of every Kaddish, the one who made peace in the heavens, may he make peace on earth. What is this about peace? The Shabbat candles, we are lit to bring peace into the home, shalom. What's the shalom? What about hava, love, not unity? What is this peace? Why is this such a central pillar of Judaism? It's interesting, we touched on the word of she shalom bim romav, he who makes peace in the heavens. What does it mean God makes peace in the heavens? Is there fighting going on in the heavens? So the Kabbalists explain uh, maybe it's from the Talmud, I forget. But the, there's an angel of fire and an angel of water. Well, fire either consumes the water, boils it out, or the water extinguishes the fire. How do they both coexist? Well, both the malachim are in servitude to, the, to God that they can coexist. Remain fire and water and coexist. Shalom, peace, is not where we become one. Shalom, peace, is not where I ignore my needs and my opinion and my ideas and put them in subordination to yours. Shalom is where I recognize you and your opinion and your ideas, and I find harmony. 
I find peace. I value them even if I disagree with them. Shalom in the home is not where the husband and the wife give up on their values for the sake of the other. It's where they respect each other's values and ideas and live together in peace because there's something greater than, them, than, the, than each of the two of them, and that is the home they're creating together. This is why in, Jew, in Jewish tradition, debate is central to our Judaism. There are so many Jewish books because there's so many different opinions. And the rabbis debate each other. When we study Talmud, we study in a chavruta. We study with a partner. I want to hear what the other person has to say and grow from it. Number one, I may be incorrect in my thinking if I, when I hear from someone else. But number two, I can learn from the other person. There's no such thing as study in solitude. We study with a partner. We learn from each other. We grow from each other. That is the blessing of shalom. The word shalom is from the word shlema, to be whole. Not to be one, but to be whole. All these parts coming together with respect, with value for each other. That is the ultimate blessing that we hope for. To really grow with one another, respect one another, to find areas that even if we disagree, can have that mutual respect and get along. And that is the ultimate blessing of this Parsha. I wish you a good Shabbos. And to all our graduating students, I wish you the blessing of peace. Peace in your lives, peace in the lives you will build going forward. I also bring you regards from Bela and Musi, our daughter, who are together in Israel at the massive 150 Luchos, the emissaries campaign um, conference that's taking place in Israel. All the women on campus come together to celebrate, to learn with each other, and to most importantly, to give encouragement to our brothers and sisters in Israel to give them the support, the affection, the love that they need. May God bless us all with peace. Good Shabbos.